Welcome to Chemical Engineering World. The topic of discussion is industrial piping design. We will learn in this video about industrial piping and I am sure if you watch the complete video, it will defiantly help you a lot. We have prepared the video in such a way that it will give a detailed information about the topic and you don't have to look for other content after studying it. Topics we cover for the course are as per followings. Basic introduction, knowledge required for piping design, responsibilities as piping engineer, process flow for piping design, codes and standards, effectiveness of codes and standards, bodies for codes and standards, piping elements, material selection of piping components, specification of piping connection, types of pipes, types of end connections with advantages and disadvantages, detailed pipe fittings, flanges, gaskets etc. Pipe sizing, basic layout preparation, block preparation, specification finalization, installation of the pipes etc. So the question is why we need to learn the industrial piping? So the answer is, any industry whether it's a chemical process industry, oil and gas industry, petroleum industry, or any other process industry, piping contributes to a major part in any plant or industry investment. As per recent research, of the total project cost, major equipment cost is around 50%, and piping contributes 23% of the cost and balance 27% considering building and structure, foundation, electrical, instrumental, insulation etc. This is about CAPEX only, if we talk of OPEX if the piping is not designed properly, it may cost 30 to 40% higher costing in operation cost, so to learn the piping design is very important for us, as an engineer and as a business owners. Now as a piping designing engineer, let's see what basic knowledge are required. And we will learn each of these points in our course. 1. Basic Engineering Knowledge which includes combination of mechanical engineering, chemical engineering, electrical engineering, instrumental engineering and civil engineering. 2. Engineering economics and cost. 3. Metallurgy. 4. Methods of pipe fabrication and erection. 5. Chemistry chemical engineering. 6. Standards, codes practices. 7. Safety codes and practices. 8. Drafting procedures and practices. 9. Communication skill. Now let's discuss responsibilities of piping engineer. Are you willing to become best piping engineer in the industry? If yes, I will like to tell you only technical knowledge is not adequate for the same. A best piping engineer should have considered following four basic responsibilities to become the best engineer in the industry. First is adequacy which means piping design must be adequate to meet the process specification and physical conditions in which the plant is to operate, which involves technical knowledge. Second is economy, adequate design must be achieved at an economic cost within budget. Design costs must be minimized by maximizing the use of standardized methods of detailing and data presentation. Third is clarity. There must be clarity for the point of design and user requirements. Piping data for design derived from and used by other engineering department must be clear, consistent. Fourth point is accuracy. Details of piping must be accurate and complete. Rectification of mistakes at a later stage may prove to be very costly and can delay project completion. Process flow for piping design Firstly project department will take inputs from client regarding utilities requirements, equipment data and requirements and other auxiliary data. For the process design department will collect or prepare flow sheet and process data. For the equipment design department will provide detailed equipment design data in which connections sizes and type of utilities requirements are specified. By considering all the required data now piping department will start with the designing based on pipe system selection, which includes selection of material for pipes, sizes of pipes, selection of instrumentation for the pipes, selection of valves and fittings etc. Based on the same basic layouts were prepared and shared to client for further approval, 
after approval detailed routing of piping with supports and other detailing are shown in the drawings. Further PID diagrams are prepared. After preparation of the diagrams block that is bill of material or quantities are prepared which include pipe quantities along with sizes, valves, fittings, instruments etc. We'll see this topic in detail that how to prepare the block ladder in our course. After receiving drawings, Bach inspects the installation agency can start the installation work. So this is how the process of piping designing. Further we will discuss about piping codes and standards for scientific design of piping system, selection of proper material of construction and to detail out the material specifications, knowledge of codes and standards are essential. Each country has its own codes and standards. On global basis, American national standards is most widely used code and compliance with its requirements is accepted all over. British standards and Indian standards are also used for the design and selection of piping systems as we discussed earlier, in this video we will learn the detailed understanding, let's discuss what are codes and standards what are codes? Code mean, a group of general rules or systematic procedures for design, fabrication, Installation inspection prepared in such a manner that it can be adopted by legal jurisdiction made into a law. Thus, a code is a standard that has been adopted by one or more governmental bodies and has the force of law. It is a set of rules backed up by principles of science and experience of past safe and successful usages. What are standards? Standards mean, a set of technical definitions and guidelines. Instructions for designers, manufacturers, users. It is a system, document to be adopted by or used by the people who are executing a project. It is the documents prepared by a professional group or committee who are believed to be good proper engineering practice and which contain mandatory requirements. The users are responsible for correct application of the same. Now, for each standard engineering practice codes and standards are designed. But what about the effectiveness of codes standards? So let's discuss effectiveness of working to codes and standards to establish common agreement in engineering criteria, terms, principles, practices, materials, items, processes, etc. To follow already proven way of doing things. Safety. Reliability. To follow continually. Avoid mismatching. Interchangeability. Usage of existing system. To economize the system. To reduce inventory, to get ready-made backup from market. Let's discuss bodies for codes standards as in that is American Society of Mechanical Engineers, ANSI that is American National Standards Institute, ASTM that is American Society of Testing and Material, and other standards like American Petroleum Institute, IC. MSSSP, British Standards Institution, American Welding Society, German Standards, French Standards, Japanese Standards, International Standards Organization. Let's discuss about piping elements in a process industry. The transportation of materials in this fluid form from one place to another takes place by forcing the fluid through the piping system. The piping system not only involves pipes but also the fittings valves and other specialties. These items are known as the piping components. Code specifies the piping system as the mechanical element suitable for joining or assembly into pressure-tight fluid containing piping. These piping components are as under, pipes, fittings, flanges, gaskets, bolting, valves, special items, safety items, Piping element is defined as any material or work required to plan and install the piping system. These elements include design specifications, materials, components, supports, fabrication, materials, components, supports, fabrication, inspection and testing. Piping specification, it is a document specifying each of the components used in a piping system. Now let's discuss the most important topic that is material selection of piping components. Basically the material is selected based on its service. Thus the selection of piping materials requires knowledge of corrosion properties, 
strength and engineering characteristics, relative cost and backslash availability. The main process considerations in MAC selection are fluid corrosion properties, pressure and temperature conditions of the service and the nature of the service, toxic, volatile, explosive, etc. Piping elements are classified in three types. Metallic, non-metallic and lined. Metallic piping are further classified in two types ferrous material and non-ferrous material. Ferrous material is further classified in cast iron, carbon steel, alloy steel, stainless steel, and special alloys which are majorly used in the industry based on requirements. Non-metallic pipes are classified in PVC, CPVC, PP, HDPE, FRP, PTFE, LDPE, glass, ceramic, cement, etc. Other classification is line type. We will discuss in detail further that how to select proper material latte on. Specification of piping components. Any piping component is specified by item description, type of construction, welded or seamless, material standard with grade, material standard with grade, dimensional standard, and connection, and facing, if applicable, data sheet reference, if applicable. Now let's discuss about the pipe. Pipe it is a tubular item made of metal, plastic, glass etc. meant for conveying liquid, gas or anything that flows. Piping system in a chemical plant are comparable to the veins and arteries through which fluids, vapors, slurries, solids, etc. flow under various conditions, as imposed by solids, etc. flow under various conditions, as imposed by the process design of the plant. Piping design becomes more complex due to corrosion, erosion, toxic conditions and radioactivity. It is a very important component for any industrial plant. And its engineering plays a major part in overall engineering of a plant. Pipe is specified by its sudden thickness. Thickness is specified in schedule numbers. Corrosion allowance is included in the thickness. Classification of pipes. Seamless pipes, welded pipes which further classified in ERW which means electric resistance welded, EFW which mean electric fusion welding, spiral welded, furnace butt welded etc. and other type is forged board pipes. Type of end connections pipes can be connected by means of following ways socket weld pipe joints in socket weld pipe joints pipe will dip inside the socket fittings. As shown in the figure you can refer socket weld flange, pipe, socket weld elbow and fillet weld along with expansion gap. Advantages of this type of end connection are 1. Easier alignment than butt welding. 2. No weld metal intrusion into the bore, pole. Disadvantages are 1. The 1 by 16 inch that is 1.6 recess pockets liquid. 2. Use not permitted by code if severe erosion or crevice corrosion is anticipated. But weld pipe joints but welded pipe joints are widely used in the industrial practices, here with use of the welding electrode the joint is applied on the external surface. Advantages of this type of joints are most practical way of joining big bore piping. Reliable leak proof joint. Joint can be radiographed. Disadvantages are a Weld intrusion will affect flow. B. End preparation is necessary. Screwed pipe joints. Easiest type of installation is screwed pipe joints where based on the groves inside or outside the fittings, we need to just fit the pipe. Advantages of screwed pipe joints are Easily made at site. Can be used for where welding is not permitted due to fire hazard disadvantages. A. Joint may leak when not properly sealed B. Use not permitted by code if severe erosion, crevice corrosion, shock or vibration is anticipated. Corrosion, shock or vibration is anticipated. C. Strength of pipe is reduced as threads reduce wall thickness. D. Seal welding may be required. E. Code specified that seal welding shall not be considered to contribute for strength of joint. Flanged end pipe joints flanged end connections are used at equipments, 
Valve special items where maintenance is a regular feature, breakout flanges are provided at definite intervals on pipelines. Advantages of flanged end connections are A. Used for all process utility piping where frequent bolting connections are required or the joints need frequent dismantling. B. Reliable leak-proof joint when bolted properly. Disadvantages are A. Gasket need to be inserted properly during bolting. B. Prone to leakage if any dirt, dust is trapped between flange and gasket seating surface stub end connections you can refer the figure spigot socket and pipe joints you can refer the figure will discuss in detail for each type of end connection in separate video next topic is pipe fittings we know that in industries various fittings are used for routing of the pipe. For example if we want to change the elevation of pipe we can use elbow, if we want to reduce the pipe size we can use reducer. Similarly if we want to expand the pipe size we can use expander, for the branch generation from the main streamline, we can use T etc. For pipe fittings, in elbow, as per figure various types of elbows can be used in various material like short radius elbow, long radius elbow, long or short radius 45 degree elbow. If we talk about T, it can be equal T or reducing T. Further reducers are also classified in concentric reducer and eccentric reducer. As previously we have discussed in connection about pipes, fittings are also classified same way, screwed end fittings and butt weld fittings. Further we will discuss about type and classifications of flanges. Flanges are classified as per followings. Firstly they are classified based on pipe attachment, for the same they are further classified in slip-on, screwed, lap joint, welding neck, blind, and reducing etc. Slip-on flange are forged with hub or fabricated from plate without hub. They are welded to pipe from inside outside. Socket weld flange This flanges are welded only on outside. Note approved by IBR. Used for small bore pipes only, below 2 NB. Thickness of pipe to be specified to ensure proper bore dimension screwed on flange in this flange used where welding cannot be carried out. Used for water piping works. Welding neck flange BW to the pipe hands can be radiographed. Used for critical services. Thickness of the welding end to be specified. Blind flange used to close the pipe, equipment ends which need to be reopened later. Based on pressure and temperature rating it is classified in 125 class, 150 class which is majorly used, 300 class, 400 class, 600 class, 900 class, 1500 class and 2500 class. In the standard ANSI B16.5, the PT rating chart specify the cold non-shock pressure to which the flange can be subjected to at a particular temperature. ANSI B16.5 indicates the allowable pressures for various mock. Code does not recommend the use of class 150 hash flanges above 400 degree Fahrenheit. Based on facing flat face, raised face, facing tongue groove, male female, ring type joint as per figure. Gasket selection of gasket depends upon the following factors, compatibility of the gasket material with the fluid. Ability to withstand the pressure temperature of the system. For corrosive services, asbestos-free gasket's are used. They are PTFE, NAM, CAF with PTFE envelop, GFT, rubber, etc. For high temperature high pressure applications, spiral wound metallic gaskets are used. This is what in first part we have discussed, further we will learn valves, pipe size selection, block preparation, drafting and layout preparation etc. So please subscribe to Chanel for further updates. If you think this video has helped you, please like and comment, that will help others for any doubts or queries mail us at rushy.chemicalengineer at gmail.com.